welcome to another Swiggy Steve's Bargain Beer Reviews. Been hunting around the shops, there's lots going off at the moment. We've got bar, we've got BM, we've got home bargains, we've got Tesco's, we've got Adder Lodge, stuff doing really good deals. Uh, it's everywhere. So, this is King of the Swing, uh, Marsden's Brewery. Um, what do we know about Marsden's? Well, Marsden's is a massive brewery. I've reviewed a few Marsden's beers. Um, I've just that the, the EPA was fantastic. Um, they they do a lot of good. They used to do one called Firestoke that, that I used to love. A really toppy beer. Mark, their their flagship beer is Pedigree, uh, which is the last time I had that. I wasn't very impressed actually. I didn't think it was very nice. But it might have changed again. Maybe maybe I had a bad day. I'm not sure. Um, mass produced. Some of their stuff is a little bit metallic, a little bit dodgy. Uh, some of their stuff's fantastic and really good. But they're a good quality beer, and uh, I've never not had a Marsden's. I don't think. Um, Unless this went down a little dramatically. So here we've got King of Swing. So it's obviously it's one of these sort of theme beers. Uh, the Ashes has been coming off. Uh, B and M obviously lap it up a little bit. You, you get this. Chris, uh, you got all these specialty Christmas beers that crop up at, in uh, B and M. Uh, and at Easter you got all these like Easter beers and Valentine's beers and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, um, nice little label. Got a nice little cap. Um, the traditional uh, Marsden's bottle with a, with a nice little artwork on it, nice embossed. Uh, Jimmy Anderson, I don't know anything about cricket, so presumably Jimmy Anderson's a good bowler, he's king of the swing, presumably. Or oh, swinging the bat, I suppose, yeah, yeah could be a bat, could not he? I don't know. So that, that just shows you how little I know about cricket. I, I do like sport a lot, but cricket's got one of those things I like. No idea what I've got, no idea what it's like. The problem with some of these um, novelty beers. You kind of wonder they're only they're only like it's like your seasonal beers. The seasonal beers are better because you know they're going to be coming back every year. But with something like this, if it it might not come back, it might just be a one off. So are the brewery really going to put that much time and effort into making a beer that's only going to be seen by a few people? Okay, limited edition. Okay, take off the crown. Pop that over there. Yeah, I'm getting a nice sort of smell from that, a nice, uh, getting a hoppy note from that, definitely. Okay, yet yeah, another strawberry, golden coloured beer. <laughs> They're all the same colour, aren't they, these beers? Um, carbonation's pretty medium, I'd say. So I've, I've only poured in a little bit of that, and you've got, almost got like a thing, half a finger, maybe, of uh, head on that. I, I personally prefer no head when I'm uh, when I'm smelling it, because can't, you can't smell it as well. Although I, I'm getting quite a lot from that. And it's quite sweet, um, it's definitely got a sweet smell to that. And there's, nice, there's a nice little hoppy note on there, uh, and getting a nice malt, getting sort of a, um, a light, feel like, almost like a berry sort of smell from that maybe. It smells quite alcoholic, it's only 3.8%, which is a great session beer uh, volume. I usually say anything between four, uh, three and a half and four and a half is a good session beer. When it gets towards five, it's a bit too much, I think, if you're going to be doing it all day, that is. Okay, here we go. Cheers. Um. It tastes like a really standard bitter. Um, it's pleasant enough. It's uh, it's got a bit of bitterness to it. Um, I would presume there's probably a Goldings and a Fuggles in there. I'm guessing. Um, it's got that sort of smell to it. It's got a nice sort of caramelly, toffee smell going off. A little bit of burnt bread. No, baked bread. Yeah. A little bit of a baked bread note. Uh, it's nothing lavish so far. I'm trying to take some big drinks of it. Big glugs. Because if you take big glugs, you tend to get more flavour from it. Especially from some of the weaker beers. It's a little bit watery, to be fair. There's not a great deal on that. I reviewed a Banks uh, not long back in. Um, yeah, sort of similar to the banks. This was about, this came in at um, 
one pound twenty nine a bottle, and the banks is eighty nine p. And I would say the banks is if not a bit better than that actually. Excuse me. Yeah, a little bit disappointing really that. It's not horrible. It's just really thin. It's just I can't get much off that at all. Yeah, it's got a it's got a prickly hot going up at the back of my tongue. It's kind of pricking the back of my tongue a little bit there. Um, like I say, it's pleasant enough. It's sessionable. Uh, it's the kind of thing that on draft I could imagine as a smooth, uncarbonated. I can imagine this is really nice to drink. Um, as again a first beer, but. After that, it's kind of, it, there's not a lot to it at all, really. Um, as far as a bottle of beer is concerned, yeah, I'm not getting much from that, really. Let's have a little read on the bottle. Let's see if, uh, if I'm anywhere close to it. It's going to tell us any clues as to what it's supposed to taste like. Jim Anderson, the king of the swing, have delivered a refreshing pale ale. Well, yeah, it's a pale ale, for sure. Uh, Brewed by England's leading wicket taker, so the actual wicket taker himself brewed it. Uh, it is full of appetising malt, hot character, as satisfying as any wicket, wicket maiden. This beer is best enjoyed whilst watching Jimmy Ball England to victory. Um, well, I don't watch cricket, so that's never going to happen, unfortunately. It's uh, yeah, it's malty. There is malty flavours on there. And because you're getting your toppings and you're getting your sort of slight biscuity flavours going on, it's, there's not a lot there though. It, it's disappointing. You've got to watch out for these little novelty beers. Sometimes they're brilliant, but sometimes it's always worth trying them. If, if you were to see this uh, and there weren't much else there, if you're somebody going from maybe a lager into a beer and you want to try something that's not going to offend you, that's not going to be way out there, maybe this would be quite good because. It doesn't take a million miles from a lager, to be quite honest with you. It's almost like drinking a lager. Um, but if you're somebody that's got a, an adventurous palate, definitely don't go for this. Don't waste your time. If you are somebody uh, that's just intrigued, somebody who likes Martins, try it, you know. Uh, or if you just want something to fill the fridge with and you don't want cheap lager, you know, you got guests coming around, maybe you'd want that. I mean, I can't imagine it being in stock much longer because the ashes is over and done with. So, um, yeah. Okay. Scores on the doors. Um, I'm giving this a 5.9 out of 10. Uh, it's okay. It's not going to blow you away. It's just below a 6. Um, it's a little bit of a waste of time, really. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be too cruel, but uh, it, it's just not, it's not doing anything for me. Uh, I'm not knocking Marsden's by any means because I've had some. The other review I did so far, Marsden's up at the top uh, with the EPAs, which is fantastic. Um, and it goes to show as well. This is three point eight percent, and the Marsden's EPA is three point six. So don't judge a beer by its alcoholic volume. Okay, don't do that. So. Um, it's been nice drinking. Uh, please subscribe, add any comments below. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.